This video is brought to you by Dev Mountain, a coding bootcamp that offers in-person and online courses in a variety of subjects, including web development, iOS development, user experience design, software quality assurance, and Salesforce development. For more information, consult the link in the description below. And on with our neural network that we're building using TensorFlow. And what we're gonna be doing specifically in this video is actually constructing the neural network. Uh, so we've prepared the data in a way that the neural network should be able to take it in and do what it's expected to do with that data because we've optimized all of the reviews to be of equal length, which is great. So now what we wanna do is actually build that model and we're gonna build that model using TensorFlow. So the neural network that we're gonna create is really created by stacking a number of different layers together. And the way in which one constructs a neural network is kind of a complicated decision, but it really comes down to two major questions. And that is how many layers do you want in your model and how many hidden units for each layer do you want in your model? So we're gonna be kind of going through that and we're going to be using the Keras uh, API part of TensorFlow to do that. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to define a variable, which I'm going to call vocab size, and this is going to be equal to 10,000. So again, as we recalled before, this is the input shape uh, is the, of the vocabulary count that we use for the movie reviews. We restricted the data set, the reviews that we obtained from the IMDb built-in Keras data set to the top 10,000 most commonly used words. Okay, so we're going to define that as kind of the variable, and that's going to help us define the initial layer of our neural network. So we're going to create a variable called model, and this is going to be equal to keras.sequential. What we're doing here is we're setting up the neural network. We're kind of getting ready to build it. The subsequent lines are going to be responsible for actually building the layers of the network. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of add the layers uh, one by one, and I'm going to give a little bit of a description for each of the layers as I add them in. So we have the model set up here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by adding the first layer of our neural network. So I'm going to say model.add, and I'm going to say keras.layers, and I'm going to give this embedding, and I'm going to give it vocab size 16. So let me just unpack a little bit about what is happening with this first layer. So the first layer, and all these layers are stacked sequentially. So as we go through each of these lines here, these are going to be the sequential layers of our neural net. So back to this first line. So this first layer is called an embedding layer. And this layer is gonna take the integer encoded vocabulary, and it's gonna look up the embedding vector for each word index. And these vectors are learned as the model trains. As the model trains, it's going to learn these things. So the vectors add a dimension uh, to the output array, and the resulting dimensions are gonna be batch, sequence, embedding. So that's going to be our first uh, layer. So let's keep going with our layers. What we're going to do is we're going to construct all these layers and then see kind of a summary output that Keras is going to give us to give a little bit more of a sense as to how it's interpreting this neural network. So what I'm going to do is we're going to build now the second layer, and this is sometimes called the uh, hidden layer. So the layer that we just built is the input layer. That's usually what it's called. And then we're going to construct two hidden layers, and then we're going to construct a final output layer. So let's construct the first hidden layer here. So we're going to say model.add keras.layers and dot global, uh, global average pooling 1D. So I'm going to add that as the second layer or the first hidden layer. So this layer returns a fixed length output vector uh, for each example by averaging over the sequence dimension. So this is going to allow the model to handle input of variable length, and this is going to allow it to handle that in kind of a very simple way. So the next layer that we're going to add here is we're going to go ahead and say model.add.add, keras.layers, and I'm going to say uh, dense and I'm going to give it 16, and I'm going to give it an activation function, which is just activation equal to tf.nn.relu. So I'm just going to add this third layer. So again, this is the second hidden layer or the third layer of a neural network. And what this is doing is this is kind of a fixed length output vector, and this is piped through a fully connected dense layer with 16 hidden units. So again, when we construct a neural network, we ask two questions, how many layers, how many hidden units? In this case, we're going to be using 16 hidden units. Now finally, what we want to do is we want to construct our final layer, our output layer, and we're going to do that by saying model.add, and we're going to say keras.layers, and then we'll say dot dense. We'll give it one here, so one is for the hidden unit, it's one hidden unit, and then activation, this is going to be equal to tf.nn.sigmoid. So sigmoids are uh, often used in the construction of neural networks, and they're kind of an S-shaped curve, 
And essentially what they're going to be doing, well, let me just kind of describe this last layer. This last layer is a densely connected, and it's densely connected with a single output node. So this output node is going to indicate either a zero or a one. It's going to be the output of a neural network. And this is going to give us this number. It's going to do so using the activation function sigmoid. And the sigmoid activation function is a value, it's a floating point value, somewhere between zero and one. And this represents the uh, probability or the confidence level to which the neural network has deemed fit the review to be either a positive or negative, either one or zero, uh, at the outcome of that neural network. So the sigmoid function, again, is very typical for uh, neural networks. It's kind of an S-shaped curve, where if it's above a certain threshold, it triggers. If it's below a certain threshold, it's not. That's kind of what we're uh, doing for that final output layer. And then one last thing that we can do is we can say model dot summary. And this is going to give us a summary of the neural network that we've just constructed. So I'm just going to go ahead and say write. I'll give this a clear. And then I'll say Python IMDB, run it. And this will take a little bit of time because it needs to go through kind of the whole file. We'll probably see uh, quite a bit of output from the previous videos that we have as well. So we have some of the stuff from before, and then we have our newer stuff here, which is the uh, output that we're seeing right here. So this is kind of giving us a little more information on each of the layers that we have of our neural network. There's the first layer, second, third, and fourth, and the output layer, the input layer, and the two hidden layers. And it's just giving us a little bit more um, you know, information, how many uh, total parameters there are, trainable parameters, non-trainable parameters, Lots of very interesting information that is probably beyond the scope of this video to go too deeply into, but the dot summary function is kind of a nice way for us to get a uh, bird's eye view of the neural network that we've just constructed. So let's talk a little bit more about the hidden units. So the model that we just constructed has uh, two intermediate or hidden layers. So again, that's the uh, layers, uh, these two layers right here are referred to the hidden layers. So um, and those are between the input and output layers. And the number of outputs uh, is the dimension of the representational space for that layer. So in other words, uh, to kind of say that more simply, the amount of freedom the network is allowed when learning some internal representation. So if you give that neural network more hidden units, uh, so that is like uh, essentially the freedom to work with a higher dimensional representation space or more layers, then the network can kind of work with more complex representations. So the more um, you know, complicated your neural network, the more complicated the representations it can take on. Um, this usually comes at a trade-off, of course, because you're spending more computational resources to add those layers, uh, and sometimes it can add um, sort of overfitting. It can learn unwanted patterns or patterns that improve performance on your training data, the training data that we're actually given that we're trying to train on. But then when you actually try to take that neural network that you've already trained, apply it to the testing data, it's going to perform very poorly because that neural network was overfit. So it's something to be aware of and something to be um, you know, kind of prudent with when you're actually developing a neural network. So that's really it. We've constructed our neural network here. In the next video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to go ahead and create a loss function and optimizer. This is going to um, sort of allow us to continue essentially to build our network. We need to actually tell it what is good and what is bad. And this loss function is going to be something that we define inside of our neural network to let it know, hey, you know, you're on the right path or hey, no, you're on the wrong path. And that's what we're going to be doing in the next video. So thanks again for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. If you have any, uh, if you want to see the code, code's available on my GitHub. And thanks again for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.